WFYI podcast brought to you by Bloomington, Indiana, an American college town offering food and drink, college sports, outdoor activities, live music, cool art, and good times daily. Everyone is welcome in Bloomington. More information at visitbloomington.com. This is WFYI News Now. It's April 16th, and I'm Abriana Heron. On today's show, a new report on infant and maternal mortality for Black patients, local groups trying to boost civic engagement and voter turnout, and documentary filmmaker Don Sawyer has spent years investigating homelessness in Indianapolis and around the country. His latest film explores solutions that have worked in cities like Milwaukee and Houston. We found that there's no community in the country that can't eliminate homelessness in their communities. Those stories coming up. But first, a new vending machine now provides free emergency contraception on the near east side of Indianapolis. As Side Effects Public Media's Elizabeth Gabriel reports, it's part of a collaboration between Indiana reproductive justice groups and a local business. The machine on the Near East side provides free products such as Plan B, condoms, and Narcan six days a week at the local store, Dear Mom. Lacey Davidson is the director of partnerships for Indiana Task Force. She says the vending machine aims to reduce barriers to emergency contraception due to finances, transportation, and stigma. Having something that can make the option as something that is like an everyday choice that's good for you and your family and the people that you love and for your community, that's our main thought. The new initiative is a partnership between the Indiana Task Force, All Options, and the Midwest Access Coalition. The organizations hope to eventually set up similar vending machines statewide. Elizabeth Gabriel, Side Effects Public Media. Black patients in Indiana have a higher infant and maternal mortality rate than white patients, despite having fewer births overall. Indiana Public Broadcasting's Abigail Ruman reports, U.S. News and World Report found just 26 hospitals across the country with excellent outcomes for cesarean sections and unexpected newborn complications among black patients. And only one of those hospitals is in Indiana. The organization gives the designation to hospitals that serve more than 20 patients per year and remain below a certain threshold for C-section and newborn complication rates among black patients. St. Catherine Hospital in East Chicago is the only hospital in the state to receive the high-performing designation. Dr. Hugh Mighty is an OBGYN and the Senior Vice President for Health Affairs at Howard University. He says the nation hasn't improved on maternal mortality in the past two to three decades. I'd say in some ways we've gotten worse. As the health care variables have changed, as access has changed, as obstetrical hospitals across the nation have shut down and created basically deserts where obstetrical care is is inaccessible. The list also includes three hospitals in nearby states, two in Ohio and one in Michigan. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Abigail Ruman. Indiana ranks the lowest state in the country in civic participation. As Indiana Public Broadcasting's Kirsten Adair reports, Groups from across the state hope to work together to boost civic engagement and increase voter turnout. A Walla Hub study says Indiana ranked 43rd in the country in political engagement in 2022. Community leaders like Bill Moreau of the Indiana Citizen Education Foundation say that's a big problem. The civic health of Indiana is really pretty poor. The recent Indiana Civic Summit focused on how to get young people involved in the political process, especially by voting. Stakeholders like state universities, the League of Women Voters, and the Indiana Election Division shared strategies for engaging young Hoosiers. Aaron Lewis is with the University of Evansville. We want these young people to vote. Let's make it easy for them to do so. The Indiana Bar Foundation also announced a new voter registration toolkit that helps organizations reach out to young people. For Indiana Public Broadcasting, I'm Kirsten Adair. And for our final story today... Indianapolis filmmaker Don Sawyer debuted his new documentary this month, Searching for Solutions to Homelessness Across the Country. WFYI's Ben Thorpe sat down with Sawyer to discuss what he found and what strategies could be implemented in Indianapolis. Your upcoming documentary looks at solutions to homelessness and travels the country speaking to people in cities that have reduced homelessness, particularly Houston and Milwaukee. Talk to me about what did you find? We found that there's no community in the country that can't 
eliminate homelessness in their communities. The problem is that all the institutions where homelessness touches, like uh, law enforcement, um, the judicial system, the health care system, all of it, do not work together most of the time. What happened in Milwaukee and Houston is they all sat down and said, where's the problem here? And they said, well, it's because we don't work together. Uh, and, and so they just, um, community collaboration, they cooperate with each other, they work within one system, and, and it works. They've reduced homelessness by um, amazing amounts. Yeah, Milwaukee in particular, you know, one of the stats that I've seen is a 92% reduction in chronically unhoused individuals since 2015. The city used a model called Housing First, which works to get people off the streets by immediately getting them housed. Talk to me about how that system works. Well, you know, the people that you see on the street that you avoid um, as you're walking down the street, you know, people who might be yelling at things that no one can see except them, you know, just people that you think are hopeless. Housing First was created for those folks. Um, Those folks never have a chance to get housed in the old systems because it's a compliance-based, earn-your-way-to-housing system. So Housing First looked at that and said, this is failing. What everybody deserves is a roof over their head. What everybody needs is a roof over their head for stability in order to get to a place where you can actually improve and bring the services to them give them a case manager. If the organization doesn't have those services, then the case manager navigates them through the system. As long as they have support services, you can't just put them in housing without support services. That's a recipe for failure. But if you give them support services and and you support them and give them dignity and respect like everybody expects, then the the outcomes are, are off the charts. You know, your obviously 2015 uh, documentary, Under the Bridge, looked at the criminalization of homelessness here in Indianapolis. Uh, Maybe you can talk about, you know, where you think the state of things is here in this city in in handling and managing homelessness. Indianapolis is um, not unique in its fragmented approach to to, um, addressing homelessness, and that is why Indianapolis is not better at it. Um, Milwaukee is a twin city. It basically has the same makeup, and it's in the Midwest. They're three hours away. Indianapolis um, could easily top Milwaukee in what they're doing. The, the problem here and the problem, like most places around the country, is a lack of leadership. Um, leadership has to happen from the top in order. It has to be an agenda item that we're going to solve this problem. We're not going to just get them out of the way. We're not going to just hide them. We're not going to just just build a big shelter like they're trying to do here and stick them in away from downtown so nobody has to look at them. They, you know, there's, there's um, um, th- those are typical responses that have been proven failures over, since the 80s. Uh, Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. You're welcome. That's all for today's episode of WFYI News Now. Our podcast is produced by the following people who live in your community. Drew Dodlin, Kendall Antron, who composed the music for this podcast, and me, Abriana Heron. Our news director is Sarah Neal Estes. If you liked today's episode, remember to subscribe and share and follow WFYI on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube to check in on our newsroom throughout the day. Thanks for listening. We'll be back tomorrow.